So this is um, you know, General Hospital. <laughs> but not, not actually General Hospital, but. <laughs> a um, General. What's that? A General Hospital. A General Hospital, <laughs> there you go, exactly. <laughs> and the thing that I wanted to show you guys here, um, so we have a page in the product. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of go to this page. It's going to be hard to read. I'll, I'll sort of zoom into it. Um, called the Health and Remediations page, where we kind of look at different metrics and aspects of, of what's happening with client devices and try and correlate a bunch of information together. And so this is, you know, it's a little bit of a, a, an eye chart or whatever, right? But the way this page works is this over here tells you which metric you're looking at. So Wi-Fi performance, you know, if you want to look at web experience, you know, clients to, to different, um, uh, what do you call it, internet sites or reliable internet sites, uh, DNS, DHCP, and so on. And depending on what metric you're looking at, the sort of correlations and analysis sort of switches, right? So the one I was going to sort of tell you guys about for, you know, um, this particular example is so rather than picking on Alaris or whatever, there's another vendor called Ascom. <laughs> They provide. <laughs> Boy, so we're going to pick on somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> well, pick on is strong. <laughs> Point out. <laughs> Let's go with that. Um, so, ASCOM devices are clinician communication devices. So these get like alarms. They, you know, you can do voice and video and stuff like that on them as well. It's, uh, I guess, the clinician single pane of glass. But um, these things um, are quirky. So, you know, clicking on this. Right, what this page will show us is the way to read this is over here on the, so each of these cards focuses on a different aspect. So the first card is root cause. So it'll give us what the <coughs> top root causes we see of, of ASCOM client devices having problems. The second card is access points. It'll tell us where the access points are having the worst issues or which access points are having the worst issues. Next is access point group. You know, there's custom group. Wired versus wireless, right, is another. Uh, point there, right? And basically, you know, if you open any of these cards up, so if I open this access point card up, uh, and the access points look weird because it's all anonymized data, right? But um, what you see over here, and the and sort of the actionability of, of this just right off the bat, is you take an application or a device type like ASCOM, and you ask the question, okay, where are the worst problems happening, right? And what this is telling you is that that first access point over there, you see 28% out of 58 hours. So how to interpret that is there were 58 hours of total usage of ASCOM, some client or some combination of one or several clients across time used this thing for 58 hours. And 28% of the time, there was some kind of performance issue. right? And so the, the thing is, we, we make some approximations here. So like in the sense that if you use it at all like over a certain threshold in an hour, we say that you've used it for the hour. But then we also do that on the numerator side, too. So if you had any kind of problem in the hour, then we, we count that as a problem, right? And so this sort of tells you, okay, for this application, and again, now we're talking about data correlation. So where does some of this data come from? The access point, so each client device, we sort of learn whether it's packet data or the wireless controller or things like that. We learn about which access point is connected to from the wireless controller. We learn about the ASCOM performance from the ASCOM uh, application itself, in this case. In other cases, we get it from, from other places. I'll show you other examples of correlation. Um, so this is basically, we've taken both those data streams, correlated them, and now, so this is just top APs, but now in this root cause section over here, what you're seeing over here is, okay, you can do something like, so you know, ASCOM devices have a voice and a video side of it. So I can say, OK, when I had voice problems, right, when the voice side disconnected, what does that look like? Voice problems of ASCOM devices caused by you know, high co-channel interference, as an example. Right? I can pick out those two things, and I can say, OK, well, where is that happening, that specific thing? Oh, sorry, question or? OK. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I do, but I'll yeah. wait till the end. OK, all right. Because it might take us way. OK, <laughs> gotcha. And, and what's happening here is, again, so we get ASCOM data, and we get wireless data, and we're correlating that all the time. And so now when you look at that particular cause, or actually, I'll, I'll pick poor coverage as an example, and if I include this filter. And you can sort of play around this page, with this page in all sorts of ways, uh, include, exclude, and all, all kinds of things. But now that I've sort of filtered out those two things, I can then see, OK, if I look at that particular root cause, 
first off, I know that coverage was a very low root cause as compared to co-channel interference, as compared to other things for these devices. But I can get a sense of, OK, where's the worst coverage that's affecting these kind of devices? And let me focus on that if I want to try and fix that. And so this is a page where all of this stuff is getting correlated. There's other pages in the product where the performance can be baselined over time. So you can see if you've made a change, whether that had a positive or negative effect, uh, and so on. Can you put a threshold on this? I mean, it looks overwhelming. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> I couldn't solve these today or even yep. this week. Yeah. <laughs> so could you say, just show me the top five? Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way people tend to. So we have two views in the, the product. There's recommendations which I sort of skipped over. Um, recommendations is our way of saying, hey, these are, we've looked through the data for you, and these are our top five things that you should go tackle, because they'll solve this many client hours of problems. So go fix you know, co-channel interference at this particular access point, or you know, uh, there's high noise you know, we're near these access points, which is causing this many client hours of problems. So that's one view. That's probably the, the view that a lot of people use of like, OK, no, no, you just tell me. This is a little bit of the power user view, but it's a view that's important to look at because I think you guys will get a sense of how data is correlated in the product and, and, and what is happening. So I guess I'll yeah. bring the cat out of the bag here. Um, <laughs> you guys probably have single most collect the most data. In fact, that I've, of any company we've seen here, you collect data, data, data. <laughs> and I hate to yep. use a, an a industry word we all hate. When are we going to get some AI from you guys? <laughs> Where you're making yeah. recommendations to how to fix this because you know what's wrong. Yep. And instead of getting a report that says, by the way, yeah. you're screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> when are we going to get something that does and just fixes? Ah, OK. Yeah. So, so there's two different AIs there that you speak of. <laughs> I want both. <laughs> OK. One AI is recommendations. Yeah. So again, I, I skipped past it. I, I can kind of show you some of that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show, you, show you guys in a sec. Um, but recommendations is, hey, we've looked through the data. Why don't you tell us? I mean, I don't want to go through all of this or whatever. You just tell us what, what you think are the top X or whatever. The second AI you talk about, which is automatically go and fix it, that's a different kind of AI and different kind of story. Where we've done it so far is through integration. Like People have done the integrations themselves. Um, we're sort of looking into you know, what are some like, low-hanging fruit areas of integrating with uh, infrastructure and actually taking the action. <coughs> but as of today, we don't, we don't sort of tackle that. So it's the first type of AI that, okay. that we kind of focus on. Would you, would you want like an auto ship from like, you know, CDW of extra access points to fix covers? <laughs> I'll, 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 actually, I'll Maybe. take that. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. would you, could you give me an auto quote and a PO? <laughs> <laughs> Just sign sign and here, auto, DocuSign. Auto pay for it. Yeah. An auto pay for it from Nyanza? Yeah. <laughs> I would also like an Alexa tie-in so I can say Alexa. Order more. Yeah. Order. And while you're at it, an auto RMA for when I have too many. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. 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 Alexa, please fix wireless. <laughs> Alexa, please ask Nyansa to fix wireless. Yes. No, it's Alexa, ask Mojo to relay this call to Nyansa. <laughs> so, Sorry, Rob, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so again, hard, hard to read, but I'll sort of read it up for you guys. But So this is another customer environment. These guys are sending us radius. So the metric that we're looking at, so same page that we were looking at before, this is clients not connecting because of radius. Now, in the root causes over here, so if I open this guy up, right, you'll see, so if you just had span port, as an, or if you just had um, uh, packet data, the only root cause here you'd see is a client got rejected. It's either reject or accept, right? But if you have syslog, you get all these, like, uh, what do you call it, detailed reason codes. Right, auth failure because you know this handshake failed or something like that or whatever it is. Right, these are coming from the server. Now you can then go and say, okay, you know what? I just want to focus on this root or this reason code and this reason code and whatever else, and include that. And when you do that, all the other cards on this page filter. Right. So if you have a question of like, hey, you know, uh, clients that are failing the peep handshake for some reason. <laughs> Where is that happening? Like, what AP groups or what APs is that happening on? That's going to show up here now that we've done this filter on. OK, well, that 55S AP group is sort of having this problem the most. Um, and, and this is what's going on. And, and you can add more and more filters to this as well. Um, and the other side of this is also knowing, hey, which clients right, are having this problem the most? Right? And so these are the 30 worst clients with that specific problem. 
right? That's coming from the syslog. And again, I mean, sometimes you'll see one client that's 51% of all, all the problems or whatever it is, right? And so then that's where you can focus. But again, sort of talking about correlation and, and the way the product works, the syslog data comes from the server, the wireless data comes from the wireless controller, the span port data comes from you know, live packets or whatever, right? And they're all being time aligned in the product so that when the problem happens, we can correlate all these things together. So we can say, you know what, when this particular reason code happened, what access point were these guys on? Who were the clients affected? You know, what, um, what uh, you know, uh, building were they in, and so on. So that's sort of the, I mean, th these are just some examples, hopefully, that, that um, you, know, you guys are getting a sense of how all these data sources that give us that full picture come into play to sort of tell an overall story of, of what's going on. Can we add sure. Added to that into the map. Oh, into this. Uh, oh, here. Yeah. 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 That's just a display point. <laughs> yeah. So, so we measured host names and usernames and whatever else. In this particular case, I think it's because these clients don't have a host name. Um, oh, but okay. normally, or whatever, you would see either. So we show you either the username if we have it, or we'll show you the host name if we don't have the username, or we'll show you the the MAC address. And if we don't have the MAC, we'll show you the IP, right? And so that's that's sort of how how the display works. Um, so, so that's, that's another example. And then the other example that I wanted to show you guys, let me clear that up, right? Stick with the same customer. Let's do like Office 365 performance, right? So this particular customer is sending us, what feeds are they sending us? There's a span port, there's a live packets, they're sending us wireless line controller, they're sending us radius syslog, and they're sending us NetFlow data from their, their routers, right? So now when you look at something like Office 365 performance, Right? You get sort of over here on the left is kind of a breakdown. And you know, um, so we, we try to say, you know, we, we correlate data. We don't, and correlation doesn't always equal causation, which you know, Lee will point out to me <laughs> whenever, whenever I talk to him. Right? But um, you know, what we correlate here is, hey, 23% of the time that clients are having slow Office 365 performance, it's, the Wi-Fi is bad. Right? But 77% of the time, the Wi-Fi is fantastic, and, you know, but yet Office 365 problems are happening. Right? And so that correlation is happening with a combination of looking at the packet data and looking at the wireless data. But in addition, right, over here in this card, it, you have router interface. So if I open up this router interface um, you know, card, what this is saying is that, well, the, that Office 365 data well, it's getting routed on multiple router interfaces, right? Whatever the router chooses, um, or however they've load balanced and so on. And so when that Office 365 traffic gets routed over that top inner, inner campus link or whatever, 0.5% of the time we see problems. Whereas when it gets routed over that bottom one, that you know, Comcast internet link or whatever it is, we only see the problem happen, I mean, less than 0.1% or whatever, right? So this is a way of saying, OK, across your routers now, where are we seeing user experience issues? Um, and is it tied to a specific interface and a specific service provider? Or you know, are all my service providers you know, good or bad or whatever it is, right? But this is by taking the NetFlow data. And for each flow, mapping that flow to, OK, it's coming from this client you know, who's connected to this access point, and then that traffic is going over this router interface and that traffic is hitting this particular application. So it's all of those different data sources correlated in one spot to sort of give you, um, give you the final kind of answer of, hey, these problems that are happening, why are they happening? Right? You know, and wh where are they happening? Right? So any questions or, or thoughts here? But Since it's out now, can you go ahead and flip over to the light theme? What's yeah. that? <laughs> we're, we're releasing that after today. <laughs> or today All right, actually. so notes for next yeah. year, have yeah. the light theme ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to read that, but purple and black yeah. are just really hard. I got Unless you. it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. You know, That's fair. Yeah. I, I want to go back to something Keith said a little while yep. ago about, you know, there's so much. Yep. It's really so much, and, and I think sometimes, even as, as somebody who does this every day, and I feel yeah. like I'm somewhat of a professional, even, it's even too much for me. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's almost like, is there a way to, to, I mean, I think if you just focused on the top five, 
yeah. problems, the top five issues, or, or you know, even if it's a if it's a bad issue, maybe go identify it and flag it and say, hey, you know what, this is something bad, but it's going to take you weeks to fix. Yeah. Yep. You know, go and, and sort of like call it out, identify the low hanging fruit, and say, hey, you know, you can make a lot of people really happy yep. if you fix this one little thing instead of. So let me show you. you know, a that. lot of it just it, yep. it just feels like an information overload, yep. and sometimes when that happens, yep. you just go, you know what, I, I don't even have the time and the patience to deal with yep. it, so I'm just not even going to look at it because then I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, no, for sure. So actually, when <laughs> when a customer comes into the product, right, this is the first screen they see. They see sort of a map of their campus or whatever it is. Actually, some of this is cut off for some reason, but uh, they see a map of the campus. They see all the areas which are you know, problematic, all the areas which, which are OK. And there's a tab here. And actually, we should probably have this tab be the first one. So this tab over here, it's, it's something's getting cut off. Oh, it's because I'm Zoom. Oh, I don't know, something's going on with this. I think it's because I'm projecting. But this tab over here is exactly sort of, I mean, maybe if this was just limited to top five, would be sort of what you're talking about. Basically, it's the top issue that we detect at you know, this particular customer is that, you know what, if they can alleviate rogue, this is a university, so rogue APs. <laughs> you know, this is one of those things where a customer might want to um, uh, ignore certain types of recommendations. But basically, this is the idea of, hey, we've looked through the data for you. right? And actually, of all the issues, we see this one as being the top one. As in, there are 41,000 client hours of poor Wi-Fi experience which correlate to being caused, they're on 2.4, and they're caused by uh, an, an inter, a rogue interferer. So how did you make that now. determination that it wasn't just that you already had too much Wi-Fi on 2.4 by yourself, and it was, it was actually the rogue's fault? <laughs> yeah, so it's a correlation, again. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that throughout the product, um, these are all correlations. Again, causation is much harder to determine whether, you know, between uh, because, correlation. Because if you have a client, an AP on 2.4 yep. and you have a rogue on 2.4, yep. who's to say which was the cause of the Well, so what, what we're saying here in particular is first off, the client had a bad experience in the sense that either his signal to noise ratio was low or his layer two retransmits were really high. Right? That's the first determination. Then we say, OK, the access point that he was connected to, well, what did he, what did he detect? Right? And in this case, he detected at least one rogue at like a signal level, I think more than neg 65 or something like that, right? But did he also detect yeah. another AP? Oh yeah. That there's own above that level. So both those root causes would show up, right? So, so what, the, as also potential. Also, rogue or is no, 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 no. As yours and ones, because I mean, yeah. I like. No, they're very, very different. They're I, well, very but, different. Yeah. But yeah. also, yeah. what is a rogue? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a discussion we have all the time. For sure. Is it a, a rogue? Is something that's plugged into your wired yeah. network as yeah. opposed to? a rogue being somebody else's AP. Yeah. Because so, you so, can't really yeah. classify, you can't yeah. go, oh, that's rogue, I'm gonna go yeah. shut it down. Well, no, yeah. it's, it's just their AP, yeah. and that's how the system, that's how Wi-Fi yep. works. Yep. No, in this particular case, we're just, so we separate them, uh, separate them. So when we say co-channel interference, it's your own neighbors, right, of, in your own network. And again, it has to be a signal level that's higher than a certain level, right, that's detected as you're having this problem. Uh, if we say rogue, it's, a non-your network AP. We don't look at whether it's connected to the wired network or not. You might it's want to really something. name that. Yeah, maybe because the rogue has a meaning yeah. that it's on your wire. That's fair. So yeah, I mean, maybe there's there's a better. This name. is a non-my AP. Right. Exactly. Or a neighbor AP. These guys' AP. problems are. I mean, two point four. Let me pick a five gigahertz <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me no. run it. Please let me run it. Two four. That's yeah. so much more. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> too, too many two point four issues, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, no, no, but that's fair. I mean, we actually maybe you can suggest I, a name later on. <laughs> I mean, it. literally neighbor. Yeah. Because yeah. any, I mean, Wi-Fi is unlicensed, so anybody can yeah. stand up a transmitter. That's true. At, at, and so, so your iPhone will count as a rogue. And yeah, or day. any hotspot yeah. or anybody yeah. else. And if you don't, if, unless you're in a facility that has a specific policy that says we will not allow any wireless transmitter yeah. on, and you yeah. have government agencies are like that, but. Yeah. You know, other places, yeah, everybody turns on their own hotspot. Yep. And so now it's not a really a rogue anymore. It's just a neighbor AP. Yep. yep. It's sim it could be simply exactly. my APs. Yeah. Or not other people, not my APs. <laughs> yeah, but it, that's, that's probably and it. So it's, 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 a, it's yeah. someone an unknown yeah. neighbor or something, yeah. something like that. Because yeah. when you say rogue, a lot of times, yeah. especially if somebody else is looking at this, yeah. if it's yeah. not you know, somebody who understands if somebody yeah. else, they look and they go, rogue is bad. You know, let's go get the pitchforks and yeah. <laughs> yeah. go hunt this down. Exactly. When in fact, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets out of the baseball bat and, and starts going to town, whereas in, exactly. in reality, it's just simply a different transmitter yeah. that's not mine. No, you're right. I, I think that's where a name probably helps. And yeah, I think right, I think that sure. would really eliminate, especially yeah. if the idea is that yeah. it's not going to be, you know, your tier four guys yeah. are looking yeah. at it. Tier one looks yeah. at this and all of a sudden yeah. they go rogue. Yeah. Yeah. And they go that's rogue, perfect. and everybody's yeah. rogue. <laughs> Every, I mean, everyone is rogue. Bigger <laughs> issues, like you know, yeah. longer down the yeah. road. And I think just I think changing that yeah. and sort of for sure would would eliminate a lot of stress yeah. and strife yeah. among. Yeah. Us. Well, let, yeah. let's move forward with your five gig one here. Sure. You have this thing with correlation, not yeah. causation. Yeah. If you receive this and you go do something, yeah. How is that correlated back? to say, I fixed this and it solved this problem? Oh, I mean, that's where the baseline would come in, right? So what you would do here, so, so what this is showing, right, is near this particular access point and a few others, there's poor coverage. And poor coverage, we're just calling, again, it's correlation. The clients were connected to this, these access points and they had low signal levels, right? Low signal to noise ratio. The correlation with that is typically... From whose what, point of view? AP or client? From the AP. So this is all AP point of view at this point. So, what, so the root cause of something like this would be the AP is actually transmitting too hot, meaning the clients are connecting to this from way, or very far away, and therefore the AP is detecting them at low signal levels. Right? And so that's hence the, the correlation with the transmit powers or whatever it is. Does the system right? prompt you? this point, if a change is made by the administrator, does yeah. the system prompt you and say, hey, yeah. we noticed this issue doesn't exist anymore, and then probe the administrator <laughs> for additional info on did you make a change, yep. input what you did, so that then it could so maybe in the next time correlate yeah. to the future. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, we, so we actually automatically pick that up. Let me just, um, here. So, so the workflow typically here would go, okay, let me see this in that health and remediations page filtered down to these bunch of APs that I really cared about, or that, that were sort of having this problem. This is the instant view, right? Again, it gives you a little bit more context. Like you might have a question, which clients are having this problem? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where I want to go. Well, this receives data from the WLAN controller, right? What's so that? this receives data and stuff from the WLAN controller. Can yeah. it pull the controller to yes. evaluate config changes yeah. and then mm -hmm. say, was this the change you made maybe? Yeah. So the other viewpoint, rather than an instant view, is the long-term view, or is the trending view. And so if I open this up in network history, and I just pick the top one. Which one was the top one? I don't know. I think it was, all right, let's just pick this guy. So pick a particular AP as an example, right? Now, once I do this, now I'm looking at this, you know, the second it comes up, um, filtered down to this specific AP across a certain time period. So. So basically, you know, this AP didn't see very many clients, but now you have, you know, this baseline. So we're looking at this over the last month, but we could be looking at this over the last year or whatever it is, right? And you see these annotations over here, right? So B, C, D, and E. Okay. These were automatically picked up from the controller. So we look for configuration diffs on the controller mm -hmm. to say, hey, wait a minute, you know, this changed. We want to call it out. And so you can kind of see changes on the baseline as you see these annotations. And so in this, this is the view you would use that let's say I fix something near this particular access point. Now I wanna see whether that worked or not. Well, let me pull up the baseline for that access point, this particular problem, and let me see if, and you manually create an annotation or you, know, you can let us try and pick it up automatically. Um, but that's how that, that, that process works. So that's the feedback loop, as in, yeah. okay, I made the change that you told me to, well, now, did it work or not? And this is where you would go to, to see that. What, what kind of training do you have available for your end users to learn how to do these things? <laughs> so, <laughs> John <laughs> can talk to you. Yeah, I mean, so, so that's, you know, a lot of this is, you know, goes back to some of the challenges, right? This is a, this is a new way of looking at, at your data. Um, so, you know, from a customer success standpoint, you know, it's, it's our job to bring our customers online, and we go through actually a pretty extensive onboarding process, take them through this, help them go through the, the setups, we actually take them through tickets, um, and then we, we also offer training. So we'll go uh, either on site or remote, or GT's done some cool video training for us. Um, it's a lot, 
and there's a there's a lot to um, go through in the product and and think about it. But once our customers in that short period of time, once we sort of onboard them, you know, they're running through these things uh, sort of natively, right? As, as Anna talks about, there's workflows and work paths, and you know, once you get into that, you know, we're trying to take you right through into the into the spot where here's the issue, and you know, you click on the controller change, you look at it, oh, but, you know, I made the change. Did it really impact positively or negatively? And um, yeah. Yep. For your customers you have already installed, have you asked how much human resource it takes to babysit this? I mean, each, the, each, that little thing to fix one issue, and you had hundreds, yeah. <laughs> would take 20, 30 minutes at, yep. at a piece? Yeah. I mean, this is a full-time role, just babysitting it. Yeah, I mean, so this is where it comes into how to interpret this data, right? So, you know, we have the notion of incidents, which are alerts that get generated for problems that are happening right now based on something we saw deviate. Uh, usually those fall into the bucket of like connectivity or radius or DNS or something like that, where, hey, the baseline looks like this and now all of a sudden it's changed, let's send you an alert and go fix it right away, right? That's the basic, a lot of people, some, some customers just interact with that. It's an operational perspective of, you know what, I'm not gonna fix, the long-term issues, I'll use the baselines of whenever we get to it, I just wanna make sure that the thing worked but I'm not gonna proactively go and you know, fix all these kind of problems because it just takes a really long time. So I'll just use the incident aspect of it and sort of get to the root cause of the incidents. Um, you know, we do wanna encourage customers to have a proactive view and say, you know what, proactively, this is what, you know, these are the types of issues that are going on. This is where you know, it's bad, this is where it's good. And so we want to encourage that. But you're right, it, it definitely takes more work to be proactive. I mean, you have lots of data, lots of analytics. Yeah. Do you have any data sets showing customers that we had this many problems, we installed an ANSA, they put in X number of hours, and they went down to here, and now they're at the stable baseline? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've got you know uh, a number of customers have done that, right? made the changes, and then significantly seen the improvement, right? Uh, there's another aspect, a big aspect, which is, you know, so all of us go out and make a significant investment in the in the wireless that, you know network that we have. How do we go back and then actually prove that what we did had an impact positively or negatively? And the the baselines really do do that. Um, we see a lot of our university customers who who take the time over the summer to improve particular areas, um, you know, in the network. Um, you know, add uh, capacity, uh, uh, better design into the dorms, for example. Um, you know, I, I spent many years at, at universities. Do you put APs in every room, every other room, the hallway, right, things like that? Well, how do you actually see and, and take, let's say, two buildings that are identical um, or in our uh, enterprise space, two retail stores that are identical, compare the changes that you have and see how the impact is. That's pretty powerful for them. But not only that, I mean, back to sort of the, there's so many things to do. Yeah. Um, we all know what the, often what we need to fix on the network, but what's the one thing that's gonna have the greatest impact to fix the most problems? And you know, we could, we could sit there all day and, and do tickets. If I have to go work on a particular area, what's the area that's gonna be the most impacting? And I think that's where our customers can go and they do go and they take a look at how many client impact, you know, client hours have been impacted by this problem and prioritize that fix over, you know, the five below that. You're never going to fix all of them, right? We'll get really nitpicky yeah, exactly, to things. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the top five are the, really the top five. Yeah, there's some environments where our top recommendation fixes like 50 client hours or something like that. And that's pointless. I mean, it, it really means you have a good network. But it seems like it would also be a nice yeah. MSP play to go in install this, run it, drop it down, and then say, yeah, we, and we, we, we did your fix. <laughs> right. Except then the next software release from the vendor or the, you know, <laughs> the client, uh, you know, piece comes out and messes things back up again. And, you know, it's, it's like a garden, you know, the weeds keep growing. You can pull them once. And if you walk away, you know, they'll, they'll come back in a, in a month or two. So, you know, wireless networks, any network is an inherently excessively complex environment. And you know the chaos that gets introduced by the complex environment and all the changes, you know, really, you know, uh, I mean, honestly, keep everybody in business. If if we could fix them and walk away, none of us would be here today. I think. So we've heard a lot today. We see the amount of data that you collect. We've seen a lot of the correlations, a lot of the in intelligent, you know, suggestions and things like that, if you will, with what can be shared publicly. Yeah. Where do you guys see Niantza going from here? What are your future plans for ties into other platforms, other vendors and things like that? Because, yeah. I mean, I, just honestly, from my perspective, yeah. I love the amount of insight that we get. Yeah. 
but it's a, a hard sell when I have all of this data, but really in, what I get at the end of the day is just a big dashboard. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. do anything yeah. for me to help fix the problem other than identifier. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, so I, I think, um, so there's one aspect of it is, hey, get more data and get the right kinds of data and get it into one spot that it can be correlated and analyzed and then sort of made into suggestions. The second aspect of actually turning around and programming uh, infrastructure is something, as I said, today it's done through APIs, right? As in you can pull out our recommendation and then you know, program it in. We've sort of looked at kind of, hey, you know, at least maybe there's one step of, hey, generate the CLI command for me or generate the command or whatever it is. I think that'll sort of evolve over time or maybe a firewall like an ACL rule if, you know, mm -hmm. but of course that's a little bit more of a security thing or whatever it is, right? But, um, you know, rebooting an access point or whatever yeah. it is. Um, I think the infrastructure guys are also kind of making progress here in terms of making their pro uh, products more software defined, if you will, mm -hmm. right? And I think that will help a lot. So rather than having to deal with CLI and like all these different versions or whatever, if there's a nice API on the infrastructure side, that you can then program, then that becomes a lot easier as well. So I think that's sort of an evolutionary process as, as we go forward. But definitely the, the, the goal of this is, is to get there, right? Um, Lord, as of today, we don't uh, program uh, um, infrastructure. So, okay. I think so, you can, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. You could tell, like, yeah. we all, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to speak for everybody yeah. else, but we all like the amount of data. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. it's just, yeah. there's a lot of it. Yep. And interpreting it, yeah. it's all there. Yeah. It's really good. It's just a lot to consume. Yeah. And I, I think yeah. that, I mean, obviously, you yeah. could probably tell by the yeah. comments. And th yeah. this is a lot of the yeah. takeaway I had last yeah. year, too. Yeah. 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 It's all a very useful tool, yeah. but it's just a we lot We need to simplify to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, and, that, and that's something that um, I think with customer help, especially, of like, OK, there's all this data, but what are the, just the key things that you, yes. you want to get from yep. this? Um, and some of that is reports, actually. Some, some people are like, hey, I just want this report sent to me for this particular type of issue. Give me the top five, I don't know, clients that keep failing radius over and over again with this code or something like that. And they just send that to me, and that's all I want, right? right? Um, so there's definitely cases like that. And, and I think that's something that, you know, with, with John's team and stuff like that, we'll, we'll have to keep improving for sure.